Hello and welcome to CSGB at Home. My name is Andrew Patrick and I'm the Director of Political Communications at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Uh, today we are speaking with the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence's Director of Public Policy, Rachel Graver, and the State Affairs Manager for the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence and Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence, Lisa Geller. I want to thank you guys so much both for being here. So, Thanks, Andrew, Rachel, for having me. absolutely. Um, so yesterday, big victory, House of Representatives passed the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, it was by a vote of 244 to 172. There were 29 Republicans and to get that much bipartisan support on something in these days, uh, it's just amazing. So congratu congratulations on that uh, for all your hard work. Um, but can you lay out why this reauthorization is so important and, and, and what it means? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as you know, um, VAWA was first passed in law in 1994, um, and it's theoretically reauthorized every five years, although some years there's a little bit of an extra gap. Um, and every year, uh, every time we've reauthorized it, we've built upon um, the progress we've made in the past reauthorization. Um, so, you know, when VAWA was first passed, it was about, you know, putting in street lamps. Um, <laughs> to, you know, um, ward against um, stranger rape in parks. But, you know, as, as our understanding of gender-based violence has evolved, um, so has our understanding of, um, you know, the, the solutions that survivors need. Um, and so this particular reauthorization um, is really very narrowly targeted and focused um, and survivor-centered. So we did a lot of outreach to the um, domestic violence and sexual assault fields, to survivors, to practitioners and advocates, um, and asked them, you know, what's going on in the field that we can address in this follow reauthorization? Um, and that's, that's, that's where, um, you know, the bill that, that passed yesterday came from. Um, there, there are a couple of, of, kind of key points that I, I would like to, to raise. Um, one is, again, how um, survivor-centric this is we're really digging down into what survivors are telling us about, for example, what do they want? Um, a lot of survivors are not going to call law enforcement and so they need some alternative. Um, and that's where we have restorative practices. Um, we know that for the last 25 years, the needs of um, survivors of color have been overlooked. Um, and the SAWA um, authorization has uh, $40 million for um, culture specific organizations to provide uh, domestic violence and sexual assault services. Um, it expands, or it, not expands, it, um, um, it uh, affirms um, tribal sovereignty um, by um, ensuring that uh, special criminal jurisdiction um, applies to gender-based violence crimes beyond um, what was in the last uh, law reauthorization. Um, and um, as I know that, that um, Lisa will talk about, um, it also includes key provisions to keep guns out of the hands of adjudicated abusers and stalkers. Um, so we're really delighted to have bipartisan support for this important bill um, and some great momentum moving forward. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Lisa, uh, a lot of your work uh, focuses on the link between violence against women uh, and gun violence. So how does this reauthorization of VAWA, uh, if it passes the Senate and officially uh, is reauthorized, uh, how does that um, affect and close some of these dangerous loopholes that, uh, that, that you've been working, uh, examining? Yeah, so we know, um, you know, gun violence is a complicated topic and there's some areas where we have a lot of research on it and some areas where we don't. And the link between domestic violence and firearms is one area where we have a ton of research. We know that this link is clear. We know that um, domestic violence is very prevalent in our communities. And when a gun is involved, it's much more likely to be lethal. Um, so the data behind this is not ambiguous at all. I think it's well known that um, you know, half of women killed in the United States are killed by a current or former intimate partner, and more than half of these are with a gun. Um, and, you know, the, the presence of a gun in the home increases the risk five times that this um, abused partner will be killed. And so, again, this is all to say that this is not an area where um, we don't have a lot of research on the role of guns in domestic violence. Uh, we also know that about one in four, a little over one in four homicides in the U.S. are related to domestic violence. Broadly, you know, this isn't just um, killing a, a current or former partner, but could include um, family members or children involved. 
Um, and so it's really important that we close all the loopholes that currently exist in federal law. And one of them is this dating partner loophole. And what this loophole says is that if you aren't married to your partner or haven't been married to them or don't have a child in common, but you abuse them, you can still keep your gun. And it's completely ridiculous because we also know that the data shows that, um, first of all, people are staying in dating relationships longer. Some people are never marrying. And so leaving these um, people out of this um, equation is putting a lot of lives at risk. And it's not that um, these spousal relationships, you know, current or formal spousal relationships are the only ones where violence um, is prevalent or where guns are involved. And so it's really key that this is closed at the federal level. And a number of states have, you know, either partially um, or fully closed this loophole, but allowing it in federal law um, to be closed is going to save a lot of lives. And yeah, absolutely. It's, it's extremely important. It's something we've been working on uh, for a long time. Uh, so, Rachel, next steps. What happens now? We saw uh, this legislation pass the House last Congress. Um, McConnell refused to bring it up. There was this Ernst Amendment, which was a substitute that allowed abusers to keep their guns. Uh, so, so what for our, uh, with Democrats in control, for our followers, for our supporters, what can they do to, uh, to make sure this uh, gets through the Senate and goes to uh, President Biden's desk, which this is a a, an issue that's extremely important to him. So, um, you know, obviously the bill that passed the House um, is, you know, not going to be the bill that ultimately passes the Senate. Um, in order to get to 60 votes, um, we will have to um, enter into negotiations um, on a bipartisan basis to come to a final bill that may not have everything that we want. Um, but that is a step forward from, from the status quo. Um, so, you know, that that is going to be a process. It always is a process. Um, but we have a really great bill um, that we're working from um, that passed the House uh, yesterday. As far as what supporters and, and followers can do, you know, we just really need to drive calls. We need folks to reach out to their senators and say, you know, we need to pass H.R. 1620. Um, that gives us kind of, kind of more leverage um, in the negotiation process if senators are hearing from their constituents that they want um, the bill that actually does what we want. Um, and thus, there's less um, room for them to go negotiate us down. Yeah, uh, it's uh, like this, this bill will save lives. Uh, it's important. I think 29 Republicans supporting it in the House uh, bodes well uh, for hopefully some bipartisan support in the Senate. So, uh, yeah, we, we need people to, to make calls and, and encourage their senators to, to, to pass this legislation. Um, Lisa, one of our projects uh, at the Educational Fund, uh, which we partner with, uh, NCADV, and also the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, uh, is Disarmed Domestic Violence. Uh, can you just speak very briefly about uh, Disarmed DV? Yes, thank you. Um, I would encourage anyone listening to this to visit this website to find out more, but um, disarmdv.org is a partnership, as you mentioned, from the Educational Fund Stop Gun Violence, um, NCADV and the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, as well as Prosecutors Against Gun Violence. And this is an interactive website that compares laws between states. It has statistics about um, domestic violence with, um, you know, with a firearm if that's available in all 50 states and also provides information about the statutory processes for processes for removing a firearm in case of domestic violence. And th this, this website is intended for anyone, for survivors, advocates, law enforcement, judges, researchers, and, and even more as a one-stop shop for finding out how the laws compare across all 50 states, how the statistics compare across all 50 states, um, and so to get a sense of what states need a lot of improvements to their laws in order to reduce domestic violence and inter-partner violence homicides. Um, but it's a great landscape of, of the state of these laws currently. So disarmdv.org can learn more there. Wonderful. Uh, and Rachel, you have a, a Twitter storm today. Um, what's the hashtag that uh, people can use looking for? The hashtags are uh, VAWA for all. Bawa number four, all, um, and HR 1620. Okay, uh, we will be tweeting that out. Um, I want to thank both of you guys uh, for, for making the time. Um, let's get this done, it's important. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. 
Thanks, thanks so much, Andrew and, and Lisa, and thanks for the CSGV and Ed Fun team.